What's going on? It's your boy, yes, B. All right, so we are going to talk about the storm is here. So what do I mean by that? I'm talking about just the situation and the place that our country is in. And to be honest, it ain't just the country. It's the state that our earth, that our world is in today. All this crazy stuff that we're seeing take place in our country ain't just happening in our country. This stuff is going on worldwide. But I didn't even really want to do too much um, outside research when all the other countries, when we got so much going on and that we have to deal with in our country. And in this video, I'm not going to go into depths on each one of these things. I talked about most of these things in previous videos that I've did when I was talking about bigger than Amazon. So I wanted this just to be like the main overview. And then I will go into depths on certain ones on its own vlog just to give it more time. So the reason why I call this a storm, um, last year I was saying, yo, it's a storm coming. I believe that storm is here. And I call it a storm because it's getting we're getting hit from every direction, not just economically with our finances, but we got train crashes and different vehicles and different things blowing up with all these type of chemicals in it where we don't see the full effect. What's going on with that? You feel me? Chemicals burning into the atmosphere. We don't see the full effect of what's going to take place of that. And then when we look, what was it last year, all the food factories and all that stuff that was catching fire all of a sudden and blowing up all this weird stuff that was taking place on top of everything going on in the economy. So that's why I say it's a storm. But what happens in the storm when you got a real storm that's coming? What happens? You get an alarm. You get you see it coming from afar off. You prepare. You board up your house. You get extra water. You get extra food. You do all that stuff to prepare. And for like the last six months, that's what I've really been telling people like, look, let's get our resumes. Let's try to get some extra income to prepare for what I believe is here now. And I just kind of grabbed some headlines of different things that's going on that's in this storm, just in case there's some people here who hasn't been affected by it so far, which I don't believe that's nobody. I think everybody has been feeling what we've been going through so far. And then also the reason why I want to talk about this is because I don't believe this is going nowhere no time soon. I think this is something that we're going to have to deal with as best as we can. I don't think it's going to stop in 2023, but here's just some of the headlines. Food price growth ticked back up, putting burden on consumers. Another one is this graph shows food prices are increasing. What to expect in 2023? So there's a few different things that I kind of just pulled up, just the headlines and a brief overview for it. Um, but it's basically like the food spending that we have, the economy, of course, taking place, how 64% um, percent of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck, how credit card debt's at an all-time high, energy prices are doubling for some people, sometimes even tripling for some people, people behind on utility bills more than ever, people behind on car notes, all this stuff is taking place and it hasn't even been declared a recession yet. So I was just gonna go over some of these little headlines and then kind of just talk on each one of them it says the food price growth ticked back up putting burdens on consumers are you feeling any burdens right now when it comes to food um in the article it said that they seen growth we've seen growth of like 10 percent <laughs> it looked like it's honestly i feel like it's 50 to 60 percent in my humble opinion and one thing when it comes to all these numbers on here i don't believe it <laughs> you know i mean i do not trust big media so if it's this bad now how bad is it going to get when they finally decide to declare a, um, a recession this is actually an article from utilitydrive.com saying how americans more and more americans are struggling to pay basic um power bills and utilities another area that they're saying in our country has um, reached like a record high is credit card debt and about the average person has about five thousand eight hundred in credit card debt crazy numbers all this stuff is going on right now and this is cnbc their headline saying record high credit card debt outpaces savings for nearly one third of the country one third of the country that's a lot that's a lot of people right there so this is another article. Americans are saving less and being buried in credit card debt. Are you being buried in credit card debt? Trust me, my second job that I just had, I use that to pay a lot of my debt down. It's so many people out here who's being affected by all these different things, this storm that we are in. This, is a, this was another interesting one right here. 64% of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck. 64%. That's wild. And well, I'm going to go back to that. Like I'm saying, I'm just kind of just roughly going through all of them. But that's one I did want to kind of expound on. And on this one right here, it says by the numbers, how 430,000 people got behind on their loans, on their home loans. And this was in January. Um, it's saying in just one month, 20,000 more people fell in to being behind on their loans. It says at the end of December, 410,000 people were behind on payments on loans and other things like power and telecom bills. But January saw the situation get much, much worse. Now, if they say 400,000, 
I don't believe 400,000. You feel me? I think it's way more than that. I don't trust these numbers that's going out. That's just my opinion, though. That's just me. So that's just a few of the things that I wrote down. When it, with this article right here, how it says 64% of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck, though, that means that's one tire popped away from being in trouble. That's one, you know that little engine light they used to cut on? I used to have a heart attack when I used to come on back in the day. I would pray that it would never come on. And when it did, it's like your heart just sinks. And we haven't even talked about the layoffs. 64% of people, they can't afford no vacation right now. 64% of people can't afford anything to go wrong with their job. 64% of people cannot afford to get sick. 64% of people can't afford a car accident. They can't afford to get injured. They can't afford to oversleep. That means each paycheck, they need every cent of each paycheck just to sustain their livelihood. And how many people do you think out of that 64% fall in line with the credit card debt? Listen, that's why I say we are here in the storm. I'm sure a high percentage of the people watching this video is feeling what's going on in our country economically, whichever way. And on top of that, uh, here's another article too where it talks about 56% of Americans cannot cover a $1,000 emergency. What's a $1,000 emergency? That could be a hospital visit. Like I, like I just said about the engine light cutting on, I had to spend, what, $2,300 $2, just, you know, touching up stuff on my car. That could be a refrigerator going down. What if it's summertime and somebody's AC goes down? What if it's wintertime and somebody's heat goes down? A thousand dollars? I don't even think that would cover that. And like I've said, this is all before a recession has even been announced. There's also a press release where it says Americans are spending up to 300 more dollars a month due to inflation. <laughs> I'm spending more a month due to inflation. Like I say, you don't, I don't ever trust those numbers. Whatever they say, I, I, I say it's more. Let's say like $400, $500 more than you're usually spending. Automatically, if you have stayed the same during this whole situation that's been going on for this last year, two years, if you've been paying the same amount of money, you're actually getting less money because of the increase of inflation. And these are all right now what about the things that's taking place that will have a long-term effect or if we don't know it will have a long-term effect like what uh, i don't know maybe all this gas and all these toxic things being let off all over the nation let's talk about like ohio right even though we don't see the effects of what happens with that today five months from now is it going to be recalls are they going to be pulling meat off the shelves you see what i'm saying like this is we are in a crazy moment in our country's history in my opinion i don't think there's just no snapping our fingers next year all right we back to 2018 let's get it no <laughs> listen i hope so but you feel me i suggest with this storm and all this nonsense going on you need to board up your house. You feel me? You need to prepare. If you haven't yet, if you've been subscribed to my channel and you ain't been preparing, we need to check that list. What was I talking about? First thing, cutting your spending. And it's funny, on one of these little articles, they were talking about that. I'm like, yo, we've been talking about that for the last almost year. You need to cut back. I need to cut back on any extra spending. That's not needed. Want to know who else is doing that? All these big companies, feel me? Amazon, um, Walmart, all these big companies, they've been scaling back on the extra, cutting the fat, cutting back on extra spending. We need to do that as well. Not just cut back. We need to make sure that we have a cushion just in case anything happens. Because obviously most don't. 56, that means if you, 10 people in this room, you feel me, five and a limb, you feel me, five and somebody's arm, you feel me, don't have a reserve saved. They don't even have $1,000 of reserve saved. To me, this just seems like a table. You ever seen like an old chair, an old table, and it's just too much stuff on there, and you're just looking like, you feel me, don't nobody need to put nothing else on there. You start hearing it crack. You know what I mean? It just looked like something's going to fall. That's what I see right now. I have one question. How does all of this sustain itself? We're not even talking about the conflict that the world is in. Listen, <laughs> we need to, like I said, we need to add to that list of that preparedness. We need to save money, cut back. We need to prepare mentally. We need to prepare physically and we need to prepare spiritually because that's one thing I was trying to look into because I've talked about it prior about mental illnesses on the rise. What about the people who's breaking mentally? I was really trying to check those numbers. The easiest ones that I came across were more so for kids. It was saying um, that the ER was seeing spikes as high as 49% in teens 
needing psychiatric help compared to 2021. 50 percent and they're only talking about teens like the headline was cdc data shows sharp rise in teen mental health problems but parents say experts can help first off hold on <laughs> i mean first off rise in teens i'm trying to find information what about just what about the grown parents who's living in a time of uncertainty who's living in a time of stress even if you got a job and you got your house you still almost kind of stressed because you don't know what's up with your job you know what i mean so trying to find that data has been kind of difficult why is it so difficult why can we find all this other stuff but certain things are kind of more difficult to find they're already showing with teens it's been a rise in mental health and then they go on to say but parents get help how you feel me between job number one two and then three you feel me between two jobs while they on a doordash delivery that's when they gonna help <laughs> listen this don't look good i've said this before i think 2023 is going to be bad on the economic level on the mental health on the mental health level because honestly all those things are connected when you have people struggling to provide for their families all that mental stress you're sitting with bills in front of you that can't be paid you can't be paid you can't be paid what do you think that's going to reflect on that's going to reflect on people's mental health what is that also going to do has anybody been paying attention to the news of all these wild things going on throughout the country so that's going to be another storm that's going to continue to raise on that storm radar you know tornadoes come it's like oh there's a five a four a three or two one level all these levels are going to continue to raise because they all are connected that's going to reflect socially just going to the store just going out to eat or just going to the city is going to be more crime look it up home robberies um burglaries all this stuff is on a rise and i know we have not seen the peak yet and not only have we not seen the peak they haven't even declared a recession yet so that's why i say i make these videos why do i make this am i trying to scare people no i'm not i actually put you know looking i even had to stop looking at everything of what's going on because it can cause anxiety it can cause all right what can i do what can i do trying to over prepare you don't want to stress yourself out mentally but one thing you don't want to do you're not trying to be mr flamingo in this piece and put your head in the ground because i'm gonna come and kick you in the back of the leg like hey get your head up out the ground let's get prepared but also let this be some encouragement to you if you are feeling it no you're not alone I'm feeling this. I got friends that's feeling this. I got family that's feeling this. And I would just want to encourage you, keep going. No matter what, I think the most dangerous thing that we can do or anybody can do during this time is give in, is break, is cave in to the pressure. No matter how many bills you may be behind, no matter how much debt that you have, the last thing you want to do is give in you know that pressure that's over you from all that stuff and then you just give in it low-key breaks people it snaps people so i want to encourage you no matter where you're at if you need this needs to be a time where we're connecting with friends as much as possible we staying connected with family as much as possible because i truly believe that network of friends and family is going to be a huge help during the situation that we're going through because honestly i don't think this is going to end well and y'all don't want to hear my true opinions you don't you <laughs> I mean, you do not want to know what i think is going to happen i don't even want to hear it <laughs> but anyways that's already too long than what i wanted this to go like i said i'm going to touch some more on these topics on other vlogs hope you guys enjoyed this if you did be sure to hit the like button be sure to hit the subscribe button and be sure to hit the notification bell so you can see when i drop a video yes i'm also an artist i go by the name of sb the song i'm about to play is called whoa off my project called motivated if you want to check it out go ahead and look in the description i have a link where you can check it out on apple music itunes spotify all that good stuff and if you want to support you can i'm gonna catch y'all on the next video it's your boy sb let's go look Love. They say I couldn't do it, but I did. But I did. But I did. Turn stacks to a crib. To a crib. Yeah. Going up, going in. Going in. Let them sleep. Bedtime. Tuck them in. Tuck them in. <laughs>